Hi, this is Nell. Okay, this video is going to have some weird cuts because I am recording in a quiet loud environment. Um, so some random noises can be here every now and then. I'm going to try my best to filter them out. So if you um, if you see some weird jumps, apologies, it's because of that. Sammy Blank Kings asks, can I just ask whether there will be a way of adding symbols on the picture like you get on the purchase canvases with a legend in the border? And at the time she made this question, I didn't know how to do it. So I basically just say that, okay, this tutorial is just for color coding. So you better <laughs> rely on your on the accuracy of your own eyes. But later on, Liz Proctor asked to clarify the question about Photoshop adding symbols, are you saying there is no way to get symbols added in Photoshop? And she got me thinking, maybe there is a way to do it. So I can like sit down and clicking around and I got it guys. I found a way to add the symbols. So I'm going to walk you through it in this video. Hope you find it useful. What we are going to need is a file that we previously generated in the previous tutorial. If you missed it or you haven't watched it yet, you will find it in the description or at the end of this video. And well, using that image as base, this, this image with the pixels of different colors, which are going to to indicate the place of each bit that we are going to glue into our canvas. So what we are going to do now is zoom in. I'm going to pick the magic wand and I'm going to select a solid color. Once that I have this, I'm going to press Ctrl J in my keyboard so I can isolate it. And I'm going to fill it with white. So in here I'm going to press Ctrl U and in the slider of lightness I'm going to go it all the way up to the white tone so we can have a white white pixel. Once we have it we're going to right click on the layer and we're going to hit convert to smart object. And once we have this we're going to double click inside as you can see you have a the isolated pixel in, in here as a new document. We're going to zoom in and now we're going to create a new layer above this and in here we are going to place a symbol. I'm going to use the text tool and it's going to be quite big so in properties I'm going to make sure that I have the, the smaller point size and now let's put I don't know let's put a preferably let's choose a black color because I'm assuming we are going to to print our sheet in black and white and now you have a square with a symbol inside Maybe I'm going to use instead of regular, okay, in this area here, you can make it a little bit bolder. So maybe that is going to be useful. So now that we have it here, have you noticed when you create your, your smart object, it creates a separate file that is not a PSD, but a PSV or not a JPG, we are, haven't. We haven't made a PSD out of this image yet. So um, whenever you click inside a smart object, you get a PSB so file. So you basically just save it, file, save. You come back to your original file and there you have it. Now, let's save this one as a PSD because um, if we don't save constantly, since we are going to to work with a lot of smart objects, your system might crash. So, file save, and it's going to save it. 
Now, what we are going to do is put this small square exactly in the corner of our pixel, trying to adjust for size. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to place our smart object inside that folder so we can have a td file. Selecting this, you press um, you press Alt in your keyboard as you, you can notice the cursor is changing shape, you have two arrows now. So that means that you can copy this layer that you, you have previously selected. If you press Shift at the same time, it's going to align your copy to the x-axis. So basically I just move to the next pixel and now I'm going to, well, the background is already locked in case you don't have it locked. It will be um, in this um, icon in here. You can lock or unlock any layer that you are selecting it. The idea is to select the background and have it locked. Once you have it locked, then you can basically just click and drag and what happens is that all the area you are covering with your dragging is going to select the layers that you have in there. So it is easier because obviously we are going to fill all these squares with the smart objects and it's going to be hard to do if we come back and select each layer every time. So we are going to do this. Just click, drag and you have your objects already selected. So you press Alt in your keyboard, drag and then shift so it remains in the same line and then you release. You need to make sure because sometimes uh, our smart object is not exactly the same area of our pixel. Sometimes it, it um, is a little bit smaller or a, bit, a little bit bigger. You need to make sure that it keeps aligned with the uh, with uh, pixels that you have before. So this line and this line are basically the same line because if you um, keep on uncopying it when it's, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit like this, then you're going to have instances where it's not going to, it's not going to match your uh, your squares anymore and it's going to be a useless file. So you need to make sure that it aligns all the time. So, okay, we basically keep on doing that until we cover the line. Okay, this can happen sometime. So basically click, drag, and you press Alt, you move, and after you're moving is when you press Shift. Because if you press Alt, Shift, at the same time, sometimes it deselects the area where you are pressing. So, well, you need to, to mind that. And here is a little bit um, not aligned. So with my keyboard and left arrow, I move it to the back a little bit. So again, click, drag, copy, shift, and keep on doing it. Once that we already have our first line of smart objects, what we are going to, to do is to come back to the menu. If you remember, we placed our fir very first smart object inside a folder. Since we place our first smart object inside a folder, it automatically made all the copies inside this folder as well. So that is very helpful because it keeps our file somewhat tidy. Now what we are going to do is right click and from the pop-up menu, we are going to choose convert to smart object. So now the folder that we have is now a smart object. And we are going to do the same thing, but this time 
we're going to copy each line down. You must make sure that you are not covering more than the area that it is supposed to cover. Same process. Drag and select. Duplicate. Make sure that you don't leave like traces of the previous line, nor that you are beyond. You can use the arrows in your keyboard in order to place it where it is supposed to be. There you go. Drag and select. Once you have all this covered, as you can see, you have a whole sheet with just your smart object. So, we could have done the thing that we did with the, our first smart object. Do you remember that we placed it inside a folder at the very beginning? And then it created all the subsequent smart objects inside of that folder. We kind of forgot to do that now, but it's okay. You just go to the first layer that you created, which is this line in here, and then you scroll up all the way until the last. You press Shift on your keyboard, so everything is selected, and you create a new folder in this icon in here. So now it's going to place it inside a folder. And this one, we're going to right-click and we're going to convert to Smart Object. Now that we have in here, as you can notice, we have the same symbol repeating all across our sheet that matches each one of the pixels that we have in our, on our original image, which are going to be corresponding to a different bit. So, I'm going to save it because we don't want for the program to crash and lose our, lose our progress. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is press Ctrl J in my keyboard. So I have two new smart objects that are sheets. And what a smart object is, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a sort of matryoshka doll where you have, you know, like this big doll and then inside there is a smaller doll, doll and there inside there is a smaller doll and you can like keep on going um, levels like in the Inception movie. Well, it's kind of like that. When you uh, select this layer and you double click inside, it's going to take you, you can, you can see it in here, Grow to PSB is going to take you to this, um, this low lower level in here inside which is the folder that we put all our lines inside you can see in this part in here each layer corresponds to one line and if you choose any of the lines in here and you double click you're going to get inside to the file of our first line and if you can see in here here is our carpet with all the all the layers that we have in here. Again, if you choose one, double click, then it's going to get you at the very core of all our structure with this our smart object, which is a pixel with a symbol. You can see all the root in here. Layer 11 PSV. This is the core. This is the next Matryoshka doll, this is an even bigger Matryoshka doll, and, well, this one is basically this same one in here. So I'm going to close it, but basically, um, yeah, if I close everything in here, and let's say that I only have this file, the one where I have my image, and the one where I have the smart objects that I just created, so Again, you double click, you enter to the sheet, 
you open the folder, you double click, you enter to the line, you open the folder, you double click, you enter. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, you need to double click in the image. If you do it in the name, it's going to get you this this menu. We don't want that menu. We want to get inside, so you need to click in here, and then it brings you to the to the core, to the atom. This will be the atom, this, is, this will be the molecule, this will be the set of molecules, and in here, well, you have your, your whole object composed of sub-elements in here. Now, what we need is to have each one of these colors coded by symbol. So, what I'm going to do is to assign a symbol to each different color. How do I do this? Well, what I have to do is to zoom in and I open the select menu. In here, you have this option called color range. And you're going to select the first, the first pixel in here that has this color. So ideally, if you have a file that is high quality, you will want to zero this one out because if you increase the fuzziness, what, what starts to happen is that it's, it's going to select Basically, everything that is mapped and in white is going to be part of the selection and everything that is marked in black is going to be left unselected. So you want to make sure that you're only selecting this color that you have in here. Um, sometimes if you save the file in a loose format like JP, JPG, you're going to have some pixels that are going to bleed out the color that you have around it. So if you select, this is going to come a little bit chipped. So maybe the fusiness, you want to increase a little bit, but not too much. So it grabs pixels of other colors. So let's increase. Since I'm opening a JPG, I'm going to increase the fusiness, like, um, I don't know, a 15. I'm going to hit OK. And in here you can notice that it is selecting this color. Now what I'm going to do is to reveal the smart object that I created before. And then I'm going to hit this icon, which is add layer mask. I hit it. And what is happening is that I am replacing this color with the symbol that I had before. I am saving so I don't lose the progress. And now, right-click on the layer and choose, uh, where is it, rasterize layer. Okay, if you notice, after we hit this rasterize layer option, this symbol in here disappears. What does this mean? Okay, it means that it, no, it is no longer a smart object. A smart object, as we covered before, is a file that when you double click on this area in here, it keeps um, keeps sending you to layers that are inside that object that compose it. So when you take that smart object and hit rasterize layer, you get rid of all those layers that came before. So if I double click in here, you can notice that nothing happens. I mean, it's not sending me to these uh, files inside because there are no longer files inside. What I'm seeing is what it is. So this is important because if I have an smart object, what is what happens? I'm going to, to duplicate this smart object that I have in here and I'm going to get inside this one, inside this one, inside this one. And now that I am at the core, I'm going to change this number. Sorry, I'm going to change this symbol to, I don't know, what do you want? The seven is going to be a number now. Okay, I'm going to put it in here. This one, I'm going to save it, file save. Once that it saved it, I'm going to save the line, file save. And now I'm going to save the sheet, file save. 
And now, as you can see in your main file, instead of having a sheet with A's, now I have a sheet with 7's. And here's the thing, I changed the core of this smart object, but if I hide this smart object, below is this second smart object, which also changed to 7, because all the smart objects that you will that you duplicating here are going to have this pixel as its core. So if you change this, it's going to change everything that is in this level that is a copy or an instance of the say the smart object. However, if you notice, we rasterize this one. This one is no longer a smart object. So what happens is that this one still holds the previous the previous symbol which was an A because since it is no longer a smart object it's not going to change. So yeah basically that's how you do it is rinse and repeating here. I will suggest that you match the kind of symbols that you are placing in your colors according how light and how dark they are. By example in here if I decided to um, to map the blacks with a symbol, maybe, by example, instead of a 7, I might, I mean, I'm, I'm putting in here a, a letter or numbers, but it can be a, it can be a symbol, it can be a figure, and you can put anything on this layer and it's going to update. So, by example, maybe I want a rectangle, and that rectangle, I don't know, I'm, I'm choosing black because I'm assuming we're printing black and white for, uh, you know, to make it cheaper. So, let's say I'm going to place this square, which has a bigger area of black than we have a, an area of white. So if I save this is this is um, the score and then I save this line and then I save the sheet. Now I have a a sheet full of um, tiny squares. And I'm going to map the, the blacks, which is the darker color that we have in here. So Let's go to select color range. I'm going to map the blacks. Hit OK and reveal the smart object. I put the mask. And if you notice, the black squares get replaced with this square symbol. Again, right click, convert to smart object, and there we go. Now I'm going to map the lighter color that I have, which is um, this one. So again, I reveal my smart object, double click, double click, double click, oh, I'm sorry, double click. Or just kind of like go straight here, so you don't have to double click all your way down. I mean, you already have them opening here. And instead of having this, um, this is square, I'm going to hide this layer, I'm going to go to the 7 one, but instead of a 7, I'm going to put, I don't know, a line, maybe this one, oh, sorry, this one, and maybe I don't want it that ball, I want it for it to be, you know, thin, so it has um, the majority of the pixel, pixel information is white, but just a tiny information in black. So I save this this pixel. I save the line. Oh yeah. After you do this um, repeatedly, it's probably going to be taxing in your memory system. So what you want to do is probably to keep on, you know, on saving this main file. So the cache or your RAM memory doesn't get to, to load it with temporary information because all of these changes are temporary information that needs to be stored there. So, oh, well, okay. So yeah, we have uh, our sheet in here. Of course, we have to save it. 
and it's going to take a lot. Sometimes it takes a lot, sometimes it's really quick. I'm not exactly sure why some symbols take more more time to be saved than others. But well, it's trial and error. I think this is one of the downsides of this method that um, is going to it takes a while and it might be taxing on your system but at the same time it's quicker than just put the symbols manually yourself so okay we have our sheet I'm going to hide it so I can see the colors below select color range I'm going to choose this one okay reveal my more object Reveal here and as you can see this symbol is kind of like a darker symbol than this one. This one comes across lighter, which is going to help us to make sense of our of our image without color information or without, um, you know, um, shading information. So yeah, basically the rest is just rinse and repeat with each one of the colors and yeah, let's keep on doing it. So yeah, this will be the result. As you can see, if you choose your symbols properly, I mean, symbols that have more black than white for the darker colors and symbols that have more white than black for the lighter colors, you pretty much can see your, your image, even if uh, you didn't have it below. You can pretty much see how it, how it looks like. Now, if you want to you want to have the colors as an extra aid you can you know select all your layers put them inside a folder and then just reduce the opacity of course you need the layer of the with the colors below so if you reduce the opacity you have half and half you have the colors and you have uh, the the symbols and the uh, letters above and if you actually want to do this because you don't want to spend extra in printing a color file but you will still like to to have this color aid you can't um, put black and white what is this one no is this one a black and white filter above your color image you just click in, in adjustments in here and you will have, well, basically the same thing, just that now you have uh, the grayscale plus the symbols that you choose before. So yeah, basically this is how you do it. I hope that this helps you. You can put 
these symbols with a marker in the backs of your crystal beads. I think that will be the easiest way to go. But, well, this is how you do it. Hope you find it useful. And, well, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye. If you remember, we placed it at the beginning inside a... No, Luca. No. 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 Let me record, come on.